Live from Santa Clara, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering Cloud Foundry Summit 2017. Brought to you by the Cloud Foundry Foundation and Pivotal. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman with my co-host John Troyer. We're getting towards the end of a full day of theCUBE's coverage of Cloud Foundry Foundation 2017. Happy to welcome back to the program Abby Kearns, who is the Executive Director of the Cloud Foundry Foundation. Uh, Abby, we're, thank you so much for having theCUBE here. Appreciate your support and uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you, my pleasure. I always love to be on theCUBE. All right, so, so Abby, let, let's start, you know, we're getting to the end of the day. How many people were here? Can you talk a little bit about just the, the high level of the shows and uh, momentum of uh, the, the summit and the foundation? Yeah, it's, it's been an amazing event so far. Um, you know, I'm so, always so excited and thrilled to be here with the community and spending time with all the amazing people that are in it. Each and every one of them continue to inspire me. We are a smidge over last year. I think we're close to 1,700 attendees. Um, I'd have to ask for final count. But the most exciting thing about the attendees this year is over a third of them are users. And so for me, that's a really great signifier of where the momentum is around Cloud Foundry and the excitement and the engagement from the user community. Um, we've had a lot of great announcements at this event, and but also a lot of really people stepping up and becoming really engaged with the community. Yeah, and, and Abby, we've had some really good discussions with the users. Uh, there's some users that have you know, booths or sponsors of the show. Yeah. Um, one of our guests talked about how it's not just a couple of people from some of these companies, it's like, oh, they're bringing 15 or 20 people there, you know, steeped in this, uh, it's bought into their culture, uh, it, it's proliferating, is it, that something you're seeing more of? Yeah, absolutely, it's, uh, it's been phenomenal this year, and um, I couldn't be more thrilled to see the user participation. In fact, we added a separate track for user stories because we had so many submissions from users that want to talk about all the amazing work that they're doing. So, I mean, it's always a, a privilege to say, yes, let's give more space to have these stories told. Yeah, I tell you, it's one of the things I've loved seeing over about the last 10 years is it used to be, you know, getting a customer story was so tough because it's like, well, what I'm doing, well, that differentiates me and therefore I don't want to share my secrets. When you come to the open source community, it's like, okay, here's what we're doing. I want to learn from my peers. Sure, there's some, you know, IP that especially, we've got some big financials here, they're not going to share all their secrets, but uh, they're, they're sharing a bit more, and uh, it, it's very different uh, from, you know, what we traditionally saw. Yeah, and actually it's more than that. They're actually so open kimono. Like, I, I spend a lot of time with users. I run the User Advisory Council still. I kicked off the Community Day, which was for the users. And they're, they're all willing to share with other users what they're doing, what's worked, what hasn't worked. Uh, because it turns out digital transformation is hard. Right, I'm, I'm making, I'm being a bit sarcastic, but it's really, really hard, and and the technology is a piece of it. And Cloud Foundry really serves as a great enabler around this, but there's a lot of other pieces that have to fall into place, and it's so great to see a lot of these companies open and sharing about what they've learned, what they're doing, where they're going next, and why. And I mean, to me, that's just powerful. Abby, uh, talking about momentum. I don't think people may not realize the size of, of the foundation and how many members it has. Big news this week, Microsoft joining, yeah. the, joining the Cloud Foundry Foundation. Can you talk a little bit about that and about momentum and about the foundation in general? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're at 64 members with the most recent joining Microsoft as a gold member. Um, it was really great to have Microsoft and Google part of the foundation and the community and really actively participating. Um, it's really great to have the public cloud companies participating and really helping enable users and, and really participating in where the cloud found, where the technology is going. Um, the momentum has been so significant though. We've just passed the 2400 uh, contributor mark. So we've had over 2400 people contributing to Cloud Foundry. In the last 12 months alone, we've had over 51,000 commits. That is significant velocity for any open source project. Um, our self-organized user member groups, just past 200. So we have over 200 groups around the world uh, with over 70,000 people participating. And, and so when I think about momentum, that's what I think about is what are the people that are using it, how engaged are they, and how is that driving our ecosystem? Which is why one of our big announcements this week was the Cloud Foundry Certified Developer Program is now generally available. That's an opportunity to give these users the path to train, close that skills gap, get more people 
capable in running and developing applications on Cloud Foundry, but continuing to really build those strong foundations as we grow this out and really build the momentum around Cloud Foundry. Uh, so the certification program, super interesting, right? Cloud Foundry, from very early in its, its uh, evolution, right, was around, quickly realized that digital transformation, agility, uh, you know, all, the, all these cultural transformations have to happen, and we've already talked about it here, yep. right? So, uh, how are you seeing the, the foundation members and the, the customers who are not foundation members uh, dealing with this upscaling problem? Or not upscaling, but you know, the developers, learning new things. How do you get up people up to speed? Is well, it, there's a growing skills gap. Uh, you know, you've heard from some of the other users, but many of the users uh, are trying to hire thousands of developers over the next year, two years, and there's already a skills gap. There's already a skills gap of looking for enterprise developers that understand cloud native best practices and cloud native application architectures. And so our hope is this training helps build the foundation to get people trained. One of the things we found in our research was that for many organizations, they're no longer turning to outsourcing first or hiring first, they're actually looking to train people first. And so giving them the tools and the technologies to train their developers, not only on Cloud Foundry, but also cloud native best practices and cloud native application architecture best practices seems a great way to solve both of those things. Getting more users on Cloud Foundry, but also giving people the skills to be competitive in a market that's growing and changing. Yeah, absolutely, I mean something we've been hearing for a couple of years now is, how do I shift my workers from a lot of those treadmill activities to be more tightly engaged with the business, be able to help drive you know, new uses of data, uh, new things that will differentiate me from my competitor, and, and that drives deeper engagement, and you know, we, we know for so long people have been disconnected uh, with the business, and it, we've definitely seen that in IT, that you know, we, we can pull them in and they, they'll feel uh, more part of that culture in, in moving forward. Right, yeah, and I mean, it's, you can't be disconnected from the business if you're innovating and iterating. If you're, if you, you know, to, to quote the Express Scripts story, they went from 45 days to four hours uh, from you know, deploying code. If you're deploying that quickly, the business has to be tightly integrated. What also has to be tightly integrated is that feedback loop with the, the customer and the user. And so really pulling all those things together is, is where um, a lot of the magic is going to happen, but that's also something that these organizations are working to build. Uh, one of the other big things we, we've been watching is kind of that, that maturation of cloud. As we went from, it used to be hybrid cloud really didn't actually match what most customers were doing. Uh, today it's really a multi-cloud environment. Cloud Foundry's always spanned across environments, but uh, the, the two things I've been here to talk about this week, the open service broker API, and of course Kubo. Um, you know, what are you hearing from customers? How do those multi-cloud pieces fit together? I know you're pretty excited about the open I'm service broker excited. API. I'm do a little cheer out here yeah. for both of those. Um, <laughs> And it's because I'm passionate about both of those opportunities. Because um, they both represent early stages of broader collaboration with long-term ramifications. The Open Service Broker API project we started early last year, and we um, announced it into a formal working group at the end of last year. And that really represented a way to allow the Cloud Foundry Service Broker to not only work on multiple platforms, but also, if you're, if you're giving people the opportunity to connect the service to a single API that runs on any platform, this really builds a strong story and a strong capability around an ecosystem. And, and it, as you think about that abstraction layer and we think about what Kubo brings to the table, you know, having, allowing Bosch to extend beyond Cloud Foundry to manage Kubernetes, allowing these users that run both side by side, um, and, and bringing that day two story to the table really solves another layer of abstraction problems. So as we think about bridging all these technologies together, at the end of the day, the goal is to allow developers the freedom to create, but make it easier for them to run these things in production at scale. Abby, can you talk a little bit about the culture you're building here at the Cloud Foundry Foundation and the community? And I, I don't want to reduce it to a, to a woman in tech question, but if you looked up on stage this morning at the speakers, if you looked at the people here on, uh, that we've had on theCUBE, if you look around here, uh, this is uh, frankly more diverse than some, some conferences I've been at. And some, so uh, is that, I, I assume that that's a, a, a deliberate uh, a choice or motivation on your, on your part. Well, absolutely, uh, I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Put the obvious on the table, but it was intentional. Um, diversity, and I said a little bit on my keynote yesterday, is important to me. 
It's important to me, not only because I think it's important to make sure that everyone is represented and has a voice at the table, but also it's important to me because I think about what's important in tech is innovation. And I don't think anyone can say that they're innovating unless there's diverse participation around the table. That's powerful in a community, but it's also powerful, what's the amazing powerful piece of open source is that collaboration. And for us, you know, for me personally, diversity and inclusivity are important. For the foundation, it's also important. And, and as we thought about our, the events we wanted to hold, it was important to really reflect that in our events. So this year, uh, over half the keynote speakers this week are women. Uh, we've made a tremendous amount of effort to make sure that a lot of the speakers here are women and all the panels have women participating in them. And um, it doesn't solve a lot of the problems, we still have a long way to go, but it's really important to elevate a lot of amazing talent in our community and give everyone that voice. Yeah, I, I mean, study after study, right, have shown that, that, uh, that diverse uh, collaboration yields more innovation. Yeah. The, the math's yeah. all there. Uh, I think it's just <laughs> taken a while for everyone to, to catch up. But you do have to be deliberate about it. It wasn't accidental. Yeah. Abby, for those people that didn't get to come to the show, can you give them a little bit of a flavor as to some of the you know, nooks, crannies, tracks, uh, and you know, cool things that they, they missed if they didn't come? We missed an amazing show. Uh, uh, I may be a little biased, so. But it's, it's been really great. We've changed so many things up this year for Summit. Um, we changed the track, so the tracks you will see be, uh, we've added uh, new language tracks. So we had Pivotal's Cloud Native Java track, and IBM sponsored a Node track, and SAP had a Polyglot BI track, and then uh, Google sponsored a machine learning track. So it was really great to bring a lot of other uh, technologies and conversations around the table alongside, you know, of course, the core projects and the platform updates, and then the user stories. We've really brought a lot of different um, opportunities to have different conversations here and, and bringing in the, the broader view and the broader view of Cloud Foundry to this event. Because at the end of the day, I want people to come here and be able to share ideas, network with other people, um, learn new things, and then ultimately have fun. That, that, that's, that's excellent, uh, you know, definitely. Um, Abby, w want to give you the final word, you know, takeaways from the show. Um, you know, we talked about a number of announcements uh, going on, but as, as people come away, what, what do you want to have them leave with uh, Cloud Foundry Foundation and the summit? I mean, we had an amazing week of announcements. Uh, some of the big ones were Kubo and Microsoft and the Cloud Foundry Certified Developer, but we also, there was so many other ones that I, I worry a lot of things slip through the cracks um, because there's just so many things. I mean, Chip had a bunch of announcements in his track about you know the local developer experience and a lot of the momentum around the project and it's just so exciting to see the community coming together and I think we're going to continue to grow and see much more engagement and I'm really looking forward to, to the next 10 years. Abby Kearns, thank you so much. Appreciate the support of you and the foundation. Bring the cube here. Always love this great programming. And yeah, we did have a majority of the segments uh, that we had here on the cube had, had women on. So you know, always appreciate the diversity uh, that, that we can provide. John and I will be back to wrap up our coverage of the cube at Cloud Foundry Summit 2017. You're watching the cube. Oh.